Hi and welcome to this video where I'm going to explain how you determine the polarity of a molecule, in particular considering the different shapes that are available at NCA level 3. This is very similar to the video that I've got on polarity of shape molecules at level 2. It's simply expanded to include a wider range of shapes. Okay, so to do this we need to think about whether or not bonds are polar or not and therefore whether or not molecules are polar. So polar bonds happen when we have bonds between two atoms with different electronegativities. Because electronegativity is defined as the attraction of an atom for a shared pair of electrons in a covalent bond, then if two atoms have different electronegativities, then the electrons that are shared will not be shared evenly and therefore there will be a polar bond. The greater the difference of an electronegativity, the more polar the bond becomes. So polar bonds are not an all or nothing category. There is a range of polar bonds. Some are very polar and some are only slightly polar. Okay, so a polar molecule, to be polar, a molecule must have an overall separation of charge. So there must be a positive end on the molecule and a negative end in the molecule or the centre of the positive charge and the centre of the negative charge must be in different places. There are lots of different ways to think about this. This comes down to two things, the polarity of the bonds and the shape of the molecule which determines the distribution of that polarity around the central atom. Okay, so quickly now, any molecule that has only nonpolar bonds can only be a nonpolar molecule. You cannot have a polar molecule with only nonpolar bonds because there can't be any distribution or separation of charge. Now, a molecule that contains polar bonds may be polar or nonpolar depending on the shape of the molecule and the types of bonds that are present. That is quite key. Just because the bonds are polar does not mean the molecule must be polar, they can be. Okay, and whether or not it's polar comes down to the distribution of the dipoles around that central atom. Okay, so if the dipoles are evenly distributed around the central atom, then they will cancel out. But that's going to depend on two things. First off, what is the shape of the molecule? So where are the bonds situated around that molecule in the first place? Are they even? Because if they're not, then obviously the bond dipoles can't be evenly distributed. And the other factor that has to be considered is are all the bond dipoles identical? In other words, are they all between the same pairs of atoms? Because if you've got different sizes and strengths of dipoles, then you're going to get different distributions of charge around that central atom. This all sounds quite theoretical. I'll show you some examples in a minute and hopefully that will help. But first off, what do we consider as a symmetrical or an asymmetrical shape? Now, these are based with around atoms that go up to six pairs of electrons around that central atom. So the shapes that we would consider to be symmetrical are linear, trigonal planar, and tetrahedral, which you would have learned at level two, and also trigonal bipyramid, square planar, and octahedral. Shapes that are considered to be asymmetrical are bent, trigonal pyramid, T-shaped seesaw, and square pyramid. Now, the easy way to remember this, if there are lone pairs in the molecule, generally, with one exception, the shapes will be asymmetrical. If there are no lone pairs, the molecule must be symmetrical because that's the way it works. The only exception is the square planar shape, which actually has two lone pairs which are exactly opposite each other, so that still keeps it symmetrical. Otherwise, lone pairs asymmetrical, no lone pairs symmetrical. That's the easy way to figure that one out. Okay, now I like to use a flowchart to explain this. And starting at the top, the first question you ask yourself is, does the molecule have polar bonds? If the answer is no, then the molecule must be nonpolar. Think I3, ozone, O3, right? All the bonds between oxygen and oxygen, there are no polar bonds, therefore the molecule must be nonpolar. 
Next question. So we're assuming that we've got polar bonds. The next question you want to ask yourself is, is the shape symmetrical? Does it have lone pairs or not? If it is not symmetrical, then it must be polar. There is no way that an asymmetrical shape can be nonpolar unless it's got no polar bonds. And then finally, asking yourself, are all the bonds identical? In other words, are they all between the same atoms? So those three questions. Now, let's look at some examples because that helps. Okay, so in the top left, we've got methanol. Methanol has polar bonds because there's differences in electronegativity between both carbon and oxygen and carbon and hydrogen. The shape is trigonal planar. It has no lone pairs. So it is a symmetrical shape. But the bonds are different. So the carbon-oxygen bond has a different dipole than the carbon-hydrogen bonds. Therefore, they do not cancel out. So methanol is polar. Next one you've got is SF4. The bonds between sulfur and fluorine are polar because of the difference in electronegativity. The shape is seesaw or distorted tetrahedron, depending on how you like to call it. This is an asymmetrical shape. The bond dipoles are not evenly distributed around the central atom. Therefore, the molecule is polar. And finally, at the bottom, we have PCL5, phosphorus pentachloride. It has polar bonds between phosphorus and chlorine because of that difference in electronegativity. The shape, trigonal bipyramid. No lone pairs, five bonds. Therefore, the shape is symmetrical, the bond dipoles cancel, the molecule is nonpolar. So the top two are polar, the bottom one is nonpolar. Okay, so when it comes to explaining this, and these are usually excellence questions, not always, but usually, then there are some key things to remember. First one is you have to talk about the polarity of the bonds first and foremost. How do you know whether the bonds are polar or not? You know that the bonds are polar or not because of the difference in electronegativity. Now, key thing, it is not just because of electronegativity. It is because of the difference in electronegativity, the difference between the two atoms. Okay. You don't necessarily need to be able to identify which one is going to be more negative and which one's going to be more positive. If you know, absolutely, then by all means state it. If you don't know, just say that there's a difference in electronegativity and leave it at that. You have to be able to talk about the shape of the molecule. Now at level three, typically they combine the shape and polarity into one question. So you've got to be able to describe the shape and the polarity as one. So you want to talk about what shape is it? How many regions of negative charge surround the central atom? How many bonding? How many lone pairs? And therefore, what is the overall shape? And finally, some sort of statement about bond dipoles being evenly distributed or not, therefore bond dipoles cancelling or not, and therefore the molecule is polar or nonpolar. Now, key thing that you should never say, do not ever say or imply that the bonds themselves cancel. It must be that the bond dipoles cancel. That is really important. Um, you will miss out on excellence if you say that the bonds cancel. There's no ifs, buts or maybes about that one. That is an absolute. Do not say that the bonds cancel. Okay, so Key things to remember, bond polarity is dependent on the difference in electronegativity between the two atoms, and the polarity of the molecule is due to the overall distribution of bond dipoles around the central atom. Therefore, the bond dipoles will or won't cancel, and the molecule will or won't be polar. I hope you find this video interesting, and hopefully I'll see you again soon. Bye.